Do you think I need to go and paint that yellow BR, bro? <laughs> Still getting excited. What's Langer? Thanks for having me around. Themos, we have the Casa del Themos watching the England game. England versus Slovakia. It's one minute, 25 seconds in. Uh, we're not going to sit here through the whole 90 minutes, but uh, I'll edit it. Well, it depends how interesting the game is. I, my prediction is it's going to be shit. <laughs> not shit, but boring. Yeah. Relatively boring. I mean, England in general are quite a boring team to watch, but they're at the top of the group, right? Yeah, they're out. This is out of the group now. This is in the last 16. Oh, you got that. Listen, we're not going to just talk about football. I've got a few European stories I want to talk about. We've got some graph critique. We might even have a, a listener's questions as well. Um, sorry, just so for the non football guys, don't be put off. Do you know, you know what I mean? Because like, you know I'm not into football. He's definitely got more invested in this game. Do you know what I mean? Like, do you know what I mean, though, yeah? I you mean, are still there, yeah? Is it Slo oh, yeah. <laughs> is it Slovakia? Yeah. Who's Man got, like Slovakia. Who's got the hotter women? England or Slovakia? <laughs> England doesn't have many. <laughs> That's bad, exactly. let's be fair. <laughs> let's be fair. But I've never been to Slovakia. Yeah, me neither. Me neither. But when you were talking about England before playing boring, it's just for me when I watch it, you know, me being from Brazil and everything. I, yeah, like, to, exactly. I like to see passion. Yeah, yeah. You, you know like what I mean? You like to see Ronaldinho. Your mum encourages Slovakia again. Get in, my son. Get in. Yeah, pat on the back for you as well, you fucking nonce. No. A uh, couple of bits were not worth that pod worthy. Oh! Oh shit, just as I walk in, no! And Ivan Trent has yet another goal of the European Championships! A third for the Slovakian winner! Damn, son! Gareth Southgate, you're a fucking nonce! Come on, let's put a bet on. Yeah. What bets Can are Can I go to the bet? For Even if it's only like a couple, couple of quid or whatever. Yeah, but yeah, I've got no money. Oh, the bet fell. I've transferred from the uh, HSBC. But I'll put a fiver in. You put a fiver, and we could we could put a tenner. What bet. a tenner's bet! That's what I'm thinking. I never. I do, I do like twenty p bets. I know. I know. <laughs> no, same. But I'm just saying we have actually some like proper stakes. You know what I mean? That's That's just a what about who's going to score the That's next ridiculous. England goal? Nine five. Woo! No. We got to get this bet in quick, son. England are going to win. All right, cool. Yeah, run, run, him, run him down, man. What bets have we got on now, man? Lou bets. Yeah. Ah, oh, four two. Uh huh. To the score to finish four two with the two pounds today, it'd be two hundred and fifty two quid back. Go on, Amber, bro. Well, let's see. We want you need England Go to get on, on back then before half time, man. But yeah, okay. Next one. Phil Foden to bag next. I think bag next. Like. Oh, the bag next got. Okay, come on, Foden, let's go, Foden. Mark Gray to bag anytime. 14 to 1, 50p gets seven pounds fifty. If who? The uh, centre back. Okay. And I put uh, 50p on it. Slovakia to win an extra time, 75p, 19 pound fifty back. All right. And then England to have zero shots on target. It's the last bit. Yeah. Okay, it's okay. a very, very Wide disturbing, <laughs> negative uh, bet slip. A couple of them doing a bit better than last week, but fuck me. All right, man. Um, tell me about your stories. I want to tell you about Sweden, man. When I was in Sweden, um, fucking, when was this? Well over 10 years. 
maybe 14 years ago or so. Went out, because I was going out with a girl from Sweden at the time. So I went out there. I went back and forth from there a couple of times, you know, uh, to Stockholm. And all her mates were grass. It's nice out there. Right? Yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I mean, I went there during the summer once and I went there during the winter. This time it was during the winter. So there was snow. I'm talking snow up to here. Yeah. Crazy snow. And all her mates were graph writers. Yeah. And Swedish people in general, you know, they don't like a lot of them don't have a sense of humor. Mm. A lot of them quite bland. But her mates were all nutters, yeah? They're all proper jokers. I, you know, I, I got along with all of them really well, yeah? Uh, and they all bang into their hip hop and shit like that. And actually, no. Can we play a tune? Uh, no, because it's oh, right, coming so. from the uh, ITVX. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, I'm going to stick in a tune here. With the number one thief on the street, I try to tell you that back. On the biggest hustle track, it's okay to sell crack. If the cops got your back, and they certainly will, if they on your payoff, they know that if they fuck around, they getting laid off. And to cops, it's to the average citizen, a clean conscience. Compared to a steady income, it's nonsense. That's why I stay getting busted for bullshit charges. More than one time, one time came around. This what went down. Now y'all call me Roy Buller. The comedy hog. And who big? You don't shoot me. How the yours put up peace? Now we getting fucked by the long dick of the law. Inflict the social diseases, cause they use no protection. Judge slam the hammer, DA got an erection. Wouldn't even give me a public defender for such a small case. Not paying on the train. Still they wanted 4,000 kroners for my bank account. I thought that was a too big amount. But the judge didn't have no sympathy on me. All on his mind, a conviction or a fine like Junior Reed. But I wasn't fighting. No war. No war. So why did my fist in the mailman with the ticket to me, dar? I was only trying to make a whole, whole car. A whole car. The big foot beast wanna rest I and they wanna put I behind bars. In the sublar, in the sublar. Free Momia, I pull Jamar. Check it out, yeah. yeah. Yo, when the long arm of the law is grabbing you, backstabbing you, police cars passing you, on dark avenues, mag lights flashing you, pigs harassing you, breaking you down, smashing when you. The long arm no, that was a that was a banging tune, bro. It's a Swedish tune by a group called the Loop Troop. Yeah, they have a the song Troop. called uh, "The Long Arm of the Law." It's like a graffiti anthem out there. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So, so she says, "Oh, we're gonna go link my mates and we're gonna go paint this wall." Yeah. And I was like, "Cool." So I got some paint together. Well, she's a writer as well. No, 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 no. She doesn't write. Uh, but all her mates are writers, man, and hip hop heads. And so we go to this, like, it's like on the train and then it's like the end of the line. Yeah, they're like the last stop. Yeah, so almost in like the outskirts of uh, yeah. Stockholm. Yeah. In the suburbs. So we come out of the station and we go to this local pub where all our mates are and we sit there, we have a drink. They love to drink, man. So we're drinking from early. We all got bottles of everything. And then they're like, all right, we're going to go to the spot. And we walk round out into this like, field thing and then round like this building into like a little forest bit and then round this big like warehouse building and at the back of this building it's just graph all over the back of this building you know it's like a hidden away mm -hmm. legal spot and i say the word legal very loosely because it's definitely not legal it's just out so very out hidden away. away it's just hidden away no yeah. one gives a shit they all sit there and drink and and, and paint and, and do all sorts so so we go down to the spot you know what I mean? and there's about 12 of us maybe maybe 15 of us yeah and you know drinking everyone's getting drunk and we're painting painting away i do like a shitty piece but my whole time there in, in sweden in stockholm i've seen like this emblem of like a moose or not a moose an elk mm. you know they they look like a moose yeah, yeah you know what yeah, i mean yeah. and i thought it was like the swedish symbol of sweden but it's not it's a nordic symbol so like you know denmark you know, Sweden, what, what are the other ones? Norway. Norway. They all kind of have that elk as a symbol for like Nordic regions. The Nordic man then. So I put in my schemes, I put loads of like elks in my schemes and I even did like an elk character going, yo, Stockholm to, to London connection, whatever. 
Um, anyway, so we're painting away, we're catching jokes, and, and they're all like looking at because they're all young, yeah, younger, not young. Because I, I was, how old was I? Maybe 32 at the time, and my girl, she was 26, 27. Mm. So all her mates are like mid 20s. Yeah, it's fine. But like all her mates are like mid 20s. They're, you know, they're all a bit, bit younger than me, yeah. Although one or two, maybe not so much. Anyway, they're all, they're all like looking at me going, oh yeah, he's an old school head. <laughs> and this was back then, yeah. I remember them telling from, from my painting. Anyway, we're getting drunk and drunk and drunk. Anyway, we finish our painting, it starts getting dark. So we walk back to the pub that we were in. And we get back to the pub and we're drinking, drinking, drinking. Now we're getting to like 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, no, 11 at night. Mm -hmm. And we all go get on the train now, you know, like last train. So you go back, back to into the, the city. Now, all of them, obviously a lot of them, they're all talking Swedish, but you know, they're talking in English as well for my sake. And they were trying to tell me how there's so many undercover police on the trains, you know, and this station is notorious for catching graffiti rides because of this spot that's nearby. Maybe there's a train yard nearby as well. So there's always undercovers at this station. And, and they were telling me, look, if there's a group of lads, they're going to be on to us. And I, obviously I'm keeping quiet, you know what I mean? It's not my city, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I, you know, I don't know jack shit. But you have to get the train back. Right? Yeah, of course. So. Yeah. So I'm just going with the flow, but in my head, I'm thinking these guys are mad paranoid, yeah? Like, come on, we're just getting on the train, who gives a shit? Yeah, we're not gonna start graphing up the train and shit. All oh, right, but so they, they're paranoid they're, we're gonna not get even doing graphs. We're not even doing it, we're just like getting, okay, we got paint on us and stuff, but like, you know, we're just getting yeah, on the train yeah, yeah. going home. I'm like, what's the fucking big deal? Let's just get on it, you know what I mean? And, but then we're not, the way, now we got to split up, you got to stand at that end of the platform, we got to stand over here. So don't all get on the train at the same time, at the same door. I'm like, all right, okay, you know me, just go, like I said, going along with it. And we're on the plane platform now, waiting for the train, and they're all like, you know, like, they're all acting man digi as well, yeah? And I'm just there. Casual, yeah? Yeah, yeah and, I'm, also, yeah. and I'm just there with my girl going, just keeping my mouth shut and just going with the flow. And I could see them like pointing, like, you know, like gesturing towards like a couple of people on the platform going, yeah, they're undercover, they're definitely undercover. And I'm like, nah, they just look like normal people, but whatever. Anyway, we get on the train now and, and everyone spreads out on the train. So we're not all sat together. I'm with my girl and maybe one of her mates and then the rest are all spread out. And my girl, we're going to her mum's house for like dinner. We were going to go for dinner and we were mad late for the dinner and we were drunk and shit. But her mum's cool. So anyway, we're trying to, you know, get there. But it's like we're like the last stop on the other end. So everyone, one by one, they're getting off the train. Get we can up. see them. Yeah. And, and it's basically me and my missus left on the train. And we get off on the stop and we come out the exit and, and, my, and I learned this afterwards. Apparently there's like one of the biggest police stations is next to this stop. Anyway, so we get out of the stop, the s snow is up to here, you know, it's crazy oh, cold. Yeah, yeah. And then we walk around one corner and then three fucking squad cars just go <laughs> and stop, block us off there. And I'm like, oh shit. And she's like, oh shit. And then just police will jump out and starts talking to me in Swedish. They split me up from my girl. They take her over there to that car and I'm coming to this car. And I'm, you like, don't speak. Just... I'm like, I'm here from England, man. What are you doing? They're like, Jürgen, Flergen, Mergen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jürgen, Flergen, Mergen. <laughs> and I'm like, what are you talking about? We're smoking on over, And uh, yeah, and I'm just like- I'm... Did any of them speak English? Well, yeah, they started chatting to me in English and I had paint in my bag and oh, I had my yeah. digital camera. Which I'd yeah. just been, I'd been taking mad flicks all day of everything, you know what I mean? All our faces and yeah. the graph and everything, yeah? So I'm thinking if they look through this phone, they can see everything. Now, if they look through this uh, camera, and they put it all on the top of this car, my, my spray paint and, and the camera. And they're like, yeah, we know you've been here and you've been there and you've been there. And I'm like, no, what are you talking about? Oh, I'm just being with my girl. We're going for dinner at her mom's house. She lives just down the road, you know what I mean? And they were like, no, nah, you've been doing this, you've been doing that. And I'm like... I don't know. And then my girl starts speaking to them in Swedish. Yeah. And so that's when, that's when I, I just decide to keep my mouth shut. Now they keep asking me questions. See I'm if like, she can play her. it. I'm like, yeah. ask her, ask her, ask her. I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm sure she could do a better job than me. Yeah. And I don't know what she told them, man, but they held us there for about 10, 15 minutes. And like, they took my details down. I didn't have my passport or anything on me. I just told them that you know, I didn't have it on me. Um, and then they let us go. And I was like, damn, so they were being like paranoid for a reason, you know, yeah, what I mean? yeah. like it made Sounds complete like it. sense. 
And it was blatantly that the police that were on the train observing us, radioing to those guys outside, go, oh, they've left the train now. And then, then they, them lot came and got us. But I think my girl played it right and just kind of just played dumb. My boyfriend's a tourist. Yeah, I think the same. My boyfriend's a toy. Just leave him alone. It's all right. He doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, that would be brilliant. But man, the police—they're like—they're not—they're they're forced to be reckoned with, man. They're all big, tall, fucking big six five dudes, man, and they don't ramp. I love pulling the tourist card. I haven't done it yeah. for ages. Yeah. Not ages. So I don't know what's going on. I fucking just, I'm just in here on holiday. Yeah. In the middle of like a fucking ridiculous fucking storm that you've caused. You know? <laughs> yeah, there is, there is a thing about that, yeah. And also yeah, there's yeah. this that whole feeling of like, there's no, not going to be any repercussions because I'm getting on the plane back to England, man. Fuck you. Yeah, guys. you don't care. <laughs> yeah. What else been going on the last couple of days, man, graph wise? Um, keeping notes. Beautiful new dubs down at, um, White City on the way. I don't know who did oh, yeah. it. Fucking beautiful. Yeah. Looks like proper graph those bits. I love those bits. Yeah, man. I really do like those bits. And uh, Mad props to Steve on the last episode. Steve Stamp, uh, incredible uh, guest. Really fun episode. I don't like, I was telling you Good earlier, guy. man, like I feel, I feel like I didn't props him enough. To his face, you know, I was too busy trying to get the questions. Didn't give him his flowers while he was there. Yeah. In front of him. I mean, I hope he felt. I didn't either. I, I hope he I felt that we that we love what he does. You were t- you were telling me you've been watching Peacock, yeah? Yeah. You catching up on that series? Yeah. Yeah, it's quite a joke. You sort it's, of it's more you. than quite a joke. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Wicked. And Sipa's performance is good. Yeah, it's very different. Yeah. To uh, different from Grinder. Yeah. Yeah, very different. And it took a while to get like used to the character. Mm. But obviously they did like episode one where it is just about a bit of character development and that yeah. and then the storyline kicked in. But yeah, it's 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 good, it's a joke. And you could relate. Like, he's fucking brilliant in it as well. Yeah, what Steve's, yeah. yeah. He's fucking brilliant in it. And it sounded like, you know, the characters of like, you know, it was probably coming from a, a genuine place. Like, you know, when you hit your thirties or whatever and you, you see your place. Yeah, he's in his late thirties. Yeah. yeah. All and his mates are getting married yeah, and stuff kids. like that and settling down and doing this and that. Yeah. And he's like, you know, out of shape, physical yeah. training. <laughs> right. It's quite a joke. It is quite a joke. Yeah. And like uh, Steve's, Steve is banging his boss and stuff like that. Oh, right. Can't believe he's getting her nans out because he's like this like skinny little dude in the gym. He's the one who doesn't put on any weight, so he's a yeah. gold mine for. Yeah, for Siva. Yeah, who just keeps on in her training. It is fucking brilliant. Wicked. Man. First episodes like first series is like three episodes, and then the rest has got like quite a few, like eight. Yeah, and the series two is the new one that's just come out. Yeah, it's just. Drawn. Yeah, it must be. Yeah, it must be. Yeah, it's wicked. fucking brilliant, actually, and the, yeah. The, the more you get into it, the longer it goes on, the, more, the better it gets. Yeah. This is hard to do, uh, to do a pod and watch the England have got a fucking score. Yeah. They have to score. They're out of the fucking Euros. The Graph Jam is coming up on the 7th of July, Sunday 7th. So this coming Sunday is the Graph Jam. Down in Latimer Road, man. If you don't know where that is, message us on Instagram or on the email and I can direct you to where it is. Let me know if you're coming or not so I have a rough idea about numbers and wall space and shit like that, but it's gonna be first come, first serve. Hopefully we're gonna have some heads come through. I mean, people have told us they're coming, whether they come or not is, you know, we'll see, but you know, we've heard it's gonna be a bunch of heads down there, man. People you know, people you don't know. It should be fun, man. So yeah, come on down. Uh, and tap us, let us know, man. We need you down there, bruv. Uh, yeah. Oh dear! Come on, Inga, learn. There we go. There we go. Score First now. Left pair. Go, man! We got him oh! to the bank. We got him to the bank. What this is one of our best. Oh, it? It's Phil. It was the first guy. Happy Phil. What did I fucking say? No, that's the one I chose. He's he was lightly to score, but he wasn't that lightly to score. Next. Oh, that's a bet one. All right, sick. Foden was next to score. Yes. Why is he sucking his thumb? Oh, he's got a kid. His new kid. Should we have a bit of volume? Just to watch A little this. bit, yeah, just with the goal. Yeah, 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 they better be, they yeah, better not disallow. What are they looking at? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they, onside. Onside. 
Oh, offside. he's offside, man. Fuck's sakes! He's offside for fuck's sakes! What an idiot! He was just waiting there offside as well. Asking yeah, for the ball like an idiot. The, all part of the move. He was running forward the whole time. So what, is it a goal or not? They don't know anything yet. Goal stands! No, goal it stand. won't stand. Fuck! <laughs> Mate, this has been down, fucking me off. <laughs> Go on. Oh, oh. Clean it up, clean it up, clean it up. Get up, Trippier, you fucking nuts! We're playing on! Shit. Oh, if he's injured, it could be quite good. All right, England just hit the post. It's the last 10 minutes, 81 minutes into the match. Still losing 1-0. 1-0. With another utterly dog shit performance. Don't deserve anything. Yeah. Nothing. You were saying, yeah, they don't even deserve it, man. So what the fuck? Tournament's over in I the wanted last to get, 16. Just score one, man. Let's get to extra time and then maybe we can get our bet. <laughs> it's not going to happen, but still. Shows you what gambling is like. We've lost all of our money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I, we did say they were cra they were pretty ridiculous crazy bet. Yeah, they were pretty ridiculous. For fuck, who was that too? Absolutely no one. But Gareth Southgate is... He's, <clears throat> he's like praying. like He's right now like us. He's yeah. doing exactly what we're doing. Praying for a result. He's not thinking, I'm the manager of the team, what am I going to do in the yeah. six minutes? Yeah. He's not doing that. He's not running any type of fucking franchise. It's just nothing. He's literally doing like that. Oh, yeah, six minutes. Okay, sweet. That's what we're doing. And we're just yeah. spectators. Yeah. You can't be doing this. That's what I'm saying, man. Have an, have an experiment. Let's try do something. something out. Yeah, try If it you've out. got the young lads, you brought them on the fucking tour. Give really them a little, well. give them half an hour. What the yes! Is it onside? Is it everything good? That was onside. Overhead, no. Yes. Is everything good? That was a sick goal. After all that. <laughs> I just don't overhead trust the goals. I know, I know. It's an overhead kick, man. That was a sick one. Look at them high five. You're playing shit. Yeah, exactly. Sort your fucking life they out. They can't be doing that, celebrating like that. Get the ball back in the thing. Okay, I'll bet it's still on. Extra time. Come on, the old house, you cunts. Hey. You cunts. <laughs> what are you putting on this? Panda jamon. Panda? Pan, like bread. Oh, yeah. The jamon. The ham, ham bread. So super haram. It's like a, yeah, super haram. <laughs> All right, it's not halal. All right, sweet. Definitely not halal. Let's do it. But it's got cheese and shit in it. You like like a pizza dough. Yeah, it sounds fill it sounds in, amazing. Roll it up. Sounds amazing. But look, you've got to get the old egg. You've got to wipe uh, the old egg on it. With a brush, you've got a brush. Yeah, I don't have a brush. I'm just uh. going to use your fingers. <laughs> use my whiskers. Oh, yeah, yeah. you want to use that? You can use my hairy arm. Latina household. Use my hairy arm. Yeah, you have to be a good brush. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Never can use the oven. What in there? Never. Is that the blender? Ninja blender shit. Usually, that's quite good. Usually, there's a lot more shit. That's messed up. What if you just turn it on? You know, when I you want to heat that up. Yeah, you before be I careful. got used to this kind of fucking missus and her words. It's just extra storage. But it's the same in all of their houses, all of those fucking Latina houses. Yeah. And I noticed it on Instagram as well. They were like, Oh, want to use the oven in a Latina house? It's oh. just another cupboard, isn't it? Just it is technically, it's a cupboard. That's all it is. <laughs> it's exactly that. Jeez, I missed it, man. Less than a I minute. I was charging the phone. Less than a minute Less into extra time. Uh, okay, so maybe that 2-4. I read this look back. I told you he would score, and then 2-2. Two, two, yeah. And then you will get 2-4. Uh, Come on, England! Let's go, man. You see, our tune has changed a little bit now. <laughs> With it five a, minutes of play, no, it is. It is terrible. It is terrible. That goal there was a shit shot. Yeah. From uh, easy, we call it. Yeah, scrap. Yeah. Uh, which then someone flicked on with a head back in, sort of in the box, and then Harry Kane was running on and headed it on. It wasn't like you know. Yeah. What's been your favourite England song? For English. Uh, I mean, there's the three lines on the shirt, obviously. Yeah, the big that, one. because I, I, you know what I mean? I basically grew up in uh, Andy Jacobs' house from Talk Sport. <laughs> yeah. 
Who's All that? of us did the GPT. Like, Dan and Sam's dad. And he did uh, fantasy football. Wait, hold on. I, I don't know. Fantasy football, <laughs> which is like the place to be. Because Tim is a bona fide uh, commentator now for, for like Italian football or for just. You see how in Brazil they train, they train, they train on the sand. These yeah. are little kids I'm talking about. But they should and, learn and they, to play football in no shoes. No shoes on a hot sand and with a ball that's slightly too small and not fully inflated and they put a little bit of water in the ball. Yeah. Have you heard about that, yeah? So that when they kick it, the ball is doing all that sort of shit like that and they're still controlling it, playing it, and kicking it about, passing it. They have to make pro just to be able to buy some football boots. <laughs> just to buy the boots. You know what I'm saying? You know? Fuck. And then that's why they play with that passion and flair and they're not, they're willing to take risks and they, and you know what I mean? Like these things that come, and, and at the end of the day, even if you end up doing something that looks stupid, as long as you're doing it from a place of passion, of wanting to win, love we'll forgive for you. And love yeah. for the game, we'll, as viewers, okay, we might go, ah, you're shit, but then we'll be like, nah, okay, good on him. He tried, he gave it his all. You know what I mean? Who's that stand-up comedian? There's a stand-up comedian. I think he's like American, so he's talking about American football. And he's talking about the fans who sit there and go, I'd fucking do this and I'd fucking do that. And like, you're a fat fuck. Yeah, you, you, they, you No, he said they shouldn't sell these, you know, the, the, the sports tops. They shouldn't sell them as double XL. Yeah, yeah. You should be able to fit in it in a normal one to even be able to speak about it. I don't know who is that. I can't remember which one it is. Maybe it's Bill Burr, maybe. Come on, get it out. There we go. That's Lovely it. Island. Beautiful. Oh, boys. Beautiful. Let's go easy. It's out on the left. Easy there. And Ivan's there. Now, easy. now, release now. Oh, oh. oh shit. Oh. The Bando! <laughs> Could have done it for Brentford. Damn. Could have done it for Brentford. Oh, he's trying to hype up. Yeah. In a tournament, yeah. when you're all good players. Oh no, look, there's a ruck. There's a ruckers. Fight, fight, fight. Oh, Damien Rice fight, from fight, London. Fight, Come on, Ricey fight, boy. Fight, fight, fight. Damn, Ricey boy. Arms house to your mom's house. Slap it around his <laughs> face, Ricey boy. He's like, we won, man. Just walk it off, bro. See ya. <laughs> Enjoy your flight home, lads. <laughs> all right, I'm going to call, shall we call it quits here? This, I'll probably edit this down. I was really you. looking forward to doing a normal podcast after having so many guests. Stellar, class A guests. Yeah. But then this happened. Oh shit, the panda jamon. Panda All right, jamon. we're going to eat the panda jamon. Wow, it smells delicious, man. The panda jamon. Ooh. All right, bro. Say peace. Peace, party people. Arms House episode 85. 85, yeah. 85 in but the house. We'll do an extra bit. An awful England performance. Yeah. We're very sorry you had to witness that. They still won though, you know what I mean? Arms yeah. House should be the manager, fucks out. Yeah. Arms house to your mum's house. To your house. To your house. To your house. To your mum's house. Hey! Easy now. Easy now. Timmy Lee in the motherfucking house! Uh, That's what I'm saying! <laughs> that is what I'm saying! Yo. Mom's house to your mum's house. Thank you for having <laughs> me on. Look at the mic! <laughs> Look at the mic! Theme, do you want to give a proper introduction to our guest right now, man? Tim Lee is a best friend of mine. A certified Don in every ingle, every single aspect you could ever imagine. Yes. Ever even, imagine. Even the hairstyle. Whether it's academia everything. or sporting <laughs> or entrepreneurialism. Yeah. <laughs> or having children. I mean, dude's got better Having kids. newts, moving abroad, <laughs> <Yeah>. learning <laughs> languages, playing guitar, being able to bust rhymes, going to bear raves since they, knowing about graphs since way back when. This is Tim Lee, bro. GPC certified Don. Yeah. Certified Don. Very difficult to introduce a Tim Lee. Theme. What an introduction. Thank you. This is, this is the man who once wrote me a letter and I pinned it up on my cupboard and it stayed there till I left my mum's house, really. Do you remember the Linford Lunchbox Christie letter? 
<laughs> Whoa, what the hell is that? Linford. It, it was such a kind letter. Theme, theme. It wasn't long, but theme said uh, to me, people should be more like you, Timmy. Wow. And he said, you're the Linford lunchbox Christie of Brethren's, which meant that <laughs> <laughs> the Linford lunchbox Christie. Because <laughs> Linford is a, a West London Don. Yes, of course, man. And, we and you were the best man at his wedding as well. You did an incredible speech. It was such a beautiful... <laughs> Tim, uh, Tim gave me away. Gave him away. Tim the... gave me away at my own wedding. <laughs> yeah. He bought me down the aisle. <laughs> what are you talking about? Visiting to Curtis Mayfield. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Fucking oh, yeah, hell, bro. That was beautiful, man. That was a beautiful, that was a beautiful moment. It was beautiful to witness, no doubt, up in the Spanish hills. Incredible. Best friends with Messi, best friends with, <laughs> best friends with everyone you've ever met. Actually, we did mention you, Tim, in the first half of this uh, podcast when we were watching the England game, because as you can see from your microphone, that's your vocation at the moment, isn't it? Is, is commentating on, is it on football specifically or just sports in general? Football. 495 passes for Zidane's team and counting. This is Varane to Benzema who spins. Wow. Karim Benzema with the breakthrough in the 82nd minute. A goal of real quality when Real Madrid really needed it. Man, Man is a football knowledge <laughs> done, bruv, about other sports. <laughs> Travelling the world. I mean, I see the basketball top behind. I see, you know what I mean? I didn't know, man. I thought I'd Jesus ask. Christ. But let him speak. What What? what do you do, man? What, yeah, what do you get? Tim Lina have to speak to nobody. <laughs> and a chat for a wee. <laughs> Easy, oh, Tim. Tim, oh, go on. Tim, where are you now, bruv? So, Maddie, you mentioned children, right? I'm in the hallway of our flat. We've got a small flat. We live in Barcelona. It's a small You're flat. back in Barcelona already. Back in Barcelona. It's, it's, it's dinner time. It's bedtime. I thought, where Holy. am I going to be most out the way? So I've, I've come to literally the hallway. This here is the front door. Oh, wow. Okay. So I've, I've just now dressed he's it. it out last I've minute. dressed it. I've dressed it. I've dressed the set. I've made it. I've made it look. <laughs> made it look like you know my sort of teenage dream. Put up some football That's and it. basketball shirts and just make amazing. Make it a bit more presentable. Who's Amazing. that on the wall, Tim? On Here. next to you. Here. Yeah. Eggy, prepare yourself. Uh oh. Don't get bro. it twisted, <laughs> bro. He's pulling out the Ronaldinho uh, Barcelona top. That's Jesus. Incredible, man. Yeah, th th look, this is this is a special shirt for me, but I know Eggy appreciates it because I lived in Barcelona 2005, 2006. Hmm. And what a year. What Maddie, a year. Before I'd booked my ticket to go there, Theme had booked his ticket to come and visit me there. Wow. Man's going there straight up and down. <laughs> All right, dude, yeah. <laughs> and, and he came out four times in the year. And it was the year that Ronaldinho was king of the world. Yeah, Jesus and it, Christ. And uh, we played a lot of football, a lot of kick-ups. On the uh, beach waiting for Ronaldinho to join in. Yeah. That's how long we were there doing kick-ups. We, we, we fell deeply in love with him. And oh, we've been in love with him ever he since. he was my dad. But then I met him a year after Santi was born. Mm. And he very kindly... Wow, is that Can signed? You, yeah, that's signed. It says for wow. signed. I didn't even notice that, bro. Yeah, yeah, signed. Oh, my. Did he write a little note Man, then? Yeah. You? What did he yeah, say? He wrote, he wrote for Santi from Ronaldinho. Wow. wow. R10. And that was for his first birthday. So I've, Damn. He wrote, he wrote that in the one. So I, I knew Eggy would love that. What game did we see together? Oh, oh we, yeah, this was amazing. Eggy came out for a Champions League they game. They call me Eggy. People call me Eggy, by oh, the way. Yeah. For one to have a shaved head. That's the Theme. first time we've said that. The long egg. Yeah. <laughs> he came out March 2006 and we saw Barcelona Chelsea in the Champions League. Look at the way you're holding that mic yeah. above his head. Yeah, it's great. It's, <laughs> it's, the only, it's the only mic I've got in the house, isn't it, Maddie? And we tried it with the laptop. 
Yeah. We had to go quality. We had to I, go for quality. It's been a football theme this episode, so I think it's perfect. And, and can you give us like a who's the famous commentator from England who like the famous guy? John, John Motson. John, John Motson. Can you do like a John Motson style? This is arms house to your mum's house with theme and amber. Can, you know, <laughs> coming from West London. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to Arms House to Your Mum's House, coming live from West London. <laughs> with your hosts. With your hosts. With your hosts, Amber and Theme. With your hosts, Amber and Theme. There we go. Perfect. I'll edit that together. On That's a mic. good one. On <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to Arms House to Your Mum's House. This is live from West London with your Don Dapper hosts, Amber and Theme. There you go. got me. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So, okay, so we watched, uh, on the first half of this pod, we watched the England-Slovakia game. It was pretty boring. We were frustrated the whole way through, right? Till the very end. And then, obviously, we were bad-mouthing Southgate. He wasn't doing anything. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm an armchair. Well, I'm not even an armchair. I, don't, I couldn't give a flying fuck either way, to be honest, yeah. But I want England to Couldn't win Couldn't give a shit this game. Since you're a professional, we want your Since professional opinion sick. of the game and maybe a prediction of what's going to happen the rest of the tournament. Because I want to put some bets <clears> down <throat> and stuff. You know what I mean? So I know you know the stats. Well, Maddie, <laughs> my, 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 prof stats. my professional opinion doesn't really differ from my personal opinion or anybody's amateur opinion. I bet it's going to be similar to Theme's opinion or what so many England fans are saying. Mm. England were rubbish. <laughs> yeah. England were rubbish. Plain and simple, they got bailed out 94th minute by a moment of individual brilliance. Mm -hmm. That is what Southgate's relying on. He's lucky. lucky He's lucky it, it arrived. Um, and they're through. And if you look at the way they've played so far, there's, there's no way they're going to achieve anything. But football is a beautiful, brilliant game, and it is unpredictable. And it's a game of two halves. I heard it's a it's a game yeah. of two halves. <laughs> That's what I heard. So, <laughs> so. And four when it goes to extra time. <laughs> oh, and then yeah. and Maddie, uh, there's part of me that thinks if England can win playing that badly, mm. they might win the whole thing. Yeah, they might win the whole yeah. thing because it's not how you start; it's how you finish. And if they gain some yeah. momentum, and if he learns, because I think they look better when he changed the formation. So, and they've got great players on the bench. So, and. Mm. The players, a lot of the starters don't look fresh. So who knows? If they play the same way, they'll get slapped by Switzerland. But I've got a feeling now, if you can win playing that badly, you, you could win it. I mean, we were... Arg Excuse me. Sorry, Ake. We were arguing about, like me, someone who doesn't know much about it. I can see, though, when someone plays with passion when they actually want to win the ball, they're chasing after it, they get behind it. He's there like, you know, they're not, you know, falling over and like wasting time and playing tactically and all that stuff. No, they're just trying to get in the ball and get behind that. Like, you can see the players when they do that, man. And there's definitely a lack of that I see in the England team. And we were, I was trying to theorize as to why. I'm thinking they get paid way too much money during the league. And so the, the when they play for England, they just don't... <laughs> this is such follows what yeah. he's about to say. Yeah, well, to I'm trying to work it out because I don't know. It just feels to me like they just want it over and done with these tournaments because it doesn't, doesn't affect their pocket that much. Obviously, the pride should matter. I'm playing for fucking England. Yeah. <clears throat> You were saying they like don't that. care playing for England. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't feel they want the like it. to finish and go back so they can start getting paid again. It just doesn't feel like it to me. While yeah, I know, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. But I think it's, I think in the early years of Southgate, the um, standard was, was, or the bar was set very low. You know, England mm -hmm. had failed at a lot of tournaments and, <clears throat> and the bar was set low. And he came in and firstly changed like the relationship between the England team and the press and started to make it a friendlier environment and be more open to the press and more welcoming. And, and the team started to do well. You know, they, they went to the uh, semi-final of the World Cup in Russia. Mm. So there was a lot of, like, goodwill generated and positivity. And, I mean, he took over, I think, 2016. So it's a long time ago. And But now, as a result of his own success, really, the bar's set higher because people are coming into this tournament thinking, we've got to win something. We've been to mm. a semi-final, we've been to a final and we've got such good players. We've got yeah. players who are stars at Manchester City, stars at Real Madrid, stars at Chelsea, etc. So the, I do think the expectation's higher and then I do think the team looks tired, is playing worse. Perhaps the team is kind of less the blueprint of what Southgate likes. He hasn't got Sterling and Grealish and Maguire. 
mm. and Henderson. So he's kind of having to move away a bit from what he knows. And so I, I, I definitely don't think there's a lack of motivation, but I think there's cracks were surfacing and people are wondering, are we fully believing in the tactics, you know, and, uh -huh. and, and that, you know, the smallest kind of chink in the armor and it gets exposed. And I think that, because I, I sense that as well, Maddie, you know, you, the, the team looked kind of disengaged and lethargic and the, the players don't look happy. In a nutshell, they don't really look happy on the pitch until mm -hmm. Bellingham scored that brilliant goal. Yes. I was yeah. saying to him that the, the second goal was shit as well. Well, it wasn't shit, but it was, it was came out of nothing. It didn't come out of a nice play. Scrappy. Yeah. yeah. Misplaced shot, bounced onto the floor, went up. Who and, is it? Tony. Tony gets a flick. Yeah. You know, keepers already coming out. Oh, it, yeah. it, just, it was just a bit shit and a very lucky that Kane was just happened to be there to yeah. run and nod it in. I agree. It's a very strange. It just seems to me so strange why it's calling out for something so obvious. That yeah. If you gave it to most people in England, they'd say, right, this is what you do. <laughs> yeah. And, and there's, there's no chance of doing it. And when he didn't do it in that last group game, when we were already through. Yeah. Result didn't really matter. Wanted the top top of the group, but yeah. didn't play someone. Didn't t didn't change it for so long. And if you're not going to do it, then he's never going to do it. Yeah. Well, he was I, forced I, to do it. He was forced to do it with Trippier when he when he. Yeah, that was the last yeah. game. That was the yeah. that was the first yeah. knockout game, and he was forced to do that. Yeah. Yeah, I eggy theme. I agree because that it third seems game so bizarre that everyone knows what it is. Like yeah. his his mates on the commentator. I can't, it was a David Platt. I can't remember who it was. Just going, Lee Dixon. I don't know. I don't know what, yeah, I don't know what he's doing. Like, I don't know why he's waiting. Like, what do you think he's yeah. you know, losing the camaraderie can, of his on in personality? Yeah. He's cautious. He's cautious. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the way he is, you know, and he's, he's played it very cautious. That third group game when England were through, that's a chance to rest players, give other players a chance, freshen up the 11. And it's kind of win win if you do that because either your new team, does well, great. And if your new team doesn't do well, well, you're through anyway and you've kind of reinforced your conviction in your original 11. So you're kind of... And kind the players he's got, to, they're not like normal bench players. There's some oh. sick players on the yeah. fucking bench, bro. Yeah, mm. agreed. Cole Palmer, special. He's been showing you what's up. Yeah, yeah. But he won't change... He's not going to change it now for the quarters, is he? Never. But I was hoping he's out of the back. Gay is out of the back. So who's going to be like Dunk or they're going to do three at the back? I wonder if he will go three at the back with Saka at left wing back and Cole Palmer on the right. Because getting I Palmer guess. in the team, I think, is is key. I, I just think he's a brilliant player. And Who does Palmer may, play for? Chelsea. But he's Chelsea. only had one year at Chelsea. He was at Manchester City. Hmm. Well, let's see. Let's see. You know, if maybe he can change the formation and be a he bit bolder. On, Maddie. He was at Giza. I was saying this Giza plays for yeah. Chelsea. Yeah, yeah, about 26 or something goals this first season at Chelsea. He cropped player. it in. Yeah, yeah. His cross or corner, I can't remember. Mm -hmm. How are you with with stats and stuff? Like like in American sports, I know stats are so important and, and they're always talking about the stats and stats. Yeah. And stats. Obviously, stats are important here in British, like, you know, but they don't take it as... No. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's got why, different kind of qualities in the different sports, I reckon. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love the coverage of NFL, for example, and the way they bring the, the way they bring stats in and historical comparisons. I, I love it. Okay. But with yeah, yeah, yeah. with football, or certainly from my point of view, you want to go prepared with your stats, with your information. But if the game's really good, you're mm -hmm. gonna, you're not going to need as much of it. You're going to need more of that preparation if the game's bad. Yeah. And also, a stat is if you use it at the wrong moment, you might as well not use it at all because mm. it's, it's got to have context. So that's a big role of the commentator is sort of sensing and knowing where a stat fits and, and, and also where, when you've got time to get it in. What's up? So France, to me, looking shit. Uh, Holland, Holland looked, looked all right. shit. They looked all right in that game, no? Uh, everyone looks, to me, I'm, not, I'm, I'm expecting a higher quality of football all around. And England are looking shit, but like you said... I'm um, with the, uh, if this was the league and you're playing this shit and winning points, you'd be like, fucking hell, we're, we're going to turn it on at some point as like professional ballers. Man. And we're getting further in the fucking cup tournament. Yeah, only only eight teams left. Uh, the only team for me that really, Germany. really has played well is Spain. Germany. Spain. 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 Brilliant. They've oh, been right. brilliant. 
yeah, I think they've been brilliant. Germany have looked good in part. Um, I agree, France look a bit mm, stiff and void of inspiration. Com, com, si, 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 com, But I, of the big teams, I, for me, it's Spain. But you, you just never know if... You know, if they peak too early, you know, it's and they've got to play the hosts. That's going to be an amazing Spain, Germany, quarterfinal. That's yeah. What I'm saying. yeah, Spain, Germany is the next game. One of them's going yeah. home. Yeah, Spain have never beaten a tournament host. Oh wow! Never. That's a good stat. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah, but they've looked great. And Lamine Yamal, I mean, Eggy, have you been enjoying him? Yeah, 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 years yeah. Old. <sighs> God, and he didn't score on his fucking. It was his birthday or his dad's birthday. His dad's birthday. Was it his dad's birthday? I didn't know that. It was either his birthday or his dad's birthday in the first game, opening group game. Wow. He, he's the, 16, the man. It. Yeah. It's, it's wild. How old was Owen when he started with England? I think, he was, I think he was eight. When he started, he was young because I, I, I think he was 18 at the World Cup in 98, oh, okay. I think. Yeah. But he was young. Yeah. But like Lamine Yamal's played 50 games for Barcelona. Yeah. He's starring at this Euros. And, you know, he, he's still 60. Great. I can't imagine when I was 16, I was like smoking weed in the Fun park. In the <laughs> Trying to get some Yeti yeah. number. It's an exhaust You know what I mean? Just having a wank in my bedroom. You know his what I mean? dad, well, he's, his dad is like RH. You see the photo yeah. of him and his dad? It's I've met him, came you know. up together. Yeah. I yeah. reckon he's like Moroccan or Algerian or something, his dad, no? Moroccan, yeah. And, uh... They no. look like at one stage they're looking at almost like brethrens. Yeah, he's young, bro. Matt, he's like us. He's brought his yeah. in, taking into all that football he's, shit. He's a lot younger than us. Theme, his dad, Lamine's oh. dad. Yeah, he's he's probably about thirty four. Damn, something like. Don't quote me on that, years. but for for yeah. sure he's younger than us. Yeah, for what sure. Part of Spain? What part of Spain are they from? So they're from a, um, a town about half an hour north of Barcelona. Oh, okay. I went there, Maddie, and filmed earlier this season yeah. and met the dad, met the uncle. Nice. Um, the, the, the grandma and the uncle run a bakery in this town, in this suburb what? of the town. You went to what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, cool. That's his yeah. job. Jesus yeah. Christ. And I, and I don't know if you've seen his celebration where he, he makes the digits 304 with his hands. That, that represents That's the postcard. The postcode of where he was raised. Well, like a gang sign, but he does like three zero. Oh, okay, sick. Sign. That's it. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. Gang yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's for it, it, the postcode is zero eight three zero four, and that three zero four is Roca Fonda in Madero, where he was raised. He's really proud of it. There's a concrete oh. pitch. There's that one concrete pitch where he grew up playing. Where could people hear you commentate now? If if you know, where is it? Do you work for different? Theme, so I work. Places, depends. I don't know. Mo- mostly, I do La Liga, and it's English ah. language coverage. So it, it does go out in the UK, but the the broadcast has changed. It's been Premier Sports and um, a few other kind of online platforms. But okay. it, yeah, you can find it in the UK, and then it goes to other English speaking markets. Amazing. Okay, great. And and you've been covering. You've been doing this now for how long now? Six when years you- si- since we came here. Six years. What's one of the coolest moments you've commentated for like that you've seen that you maybe not witnessed live i, I assume you do uh, all, quite a bit all, all witness live. All, witness all witness live. like oh, whatever yeah whatever's no, a yeah no question um i did the playoff to get into the world cup the 2022 world cup i did there were two playoffs like intercontinental yeah and the playoff between peru and australia went to penalties Mm. and uh, commentated on that. I think you shared this, didn't you? Yeah. Surely, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. It was, out on, it was going out on BBC on the red button. Oh, wow, and okay. My phone, Maddie, when I finished the broadcast and, you know, <laughs> turned my phone on, it was, it was jokes. It yeah. was so jokes reading the conversations between mates on, on group chats. You know, oh, like, wow. first of all, one of them saying, by the way, I've got the BBC red button on. And I think it's Timmy commentating this game. And then yeah. sort of one by one, people are like, yeah, yeah, I'm on it. Yeah, I'm on it. Until everyone's in. Yeah. And then, oh, my God, you know, just <laughs> them saying, like, oh, I beg Timmy mentions this. Or I hope he yeah. mentions that. I was going to say, you know how, like, you see sometimes in the, in the American ones mainly, like, like they drop in little, like, hip-hop lyrics. 
in the in like you know they slide little things in little little like uh easter eggs or whatever you shit, want to... yeah, yeah. yeah yeah i don't know if you've ever done something like that i guess no, not i'm Your not profession. there i'm not there yet no yeah. i'm not there yet no, strictly yeah. pro fish bro strictly yeah. pro fish <laughs> And what about what about those like you know nice. talking about Peru and like you know South America and stuff like the way they do the commentary oh. like they go <laughs> <laughs> and then even the Italian yeah like yeah like, like it's just so over the top man the Arabic one does it like that as well they try and emulate those guys and what well, like why do the British guys keep it so stiff top upper lip you know what I mean and. Well, I mean, there's been a few That's crazy... That's how it was back in England, man. You listen, listen to any kind of fucking show from back in the day on the radio yeah. or the television, and everybody talked like that, you know. And it was like, you know. Yeah. Who's been your favourite? You know, the weird accent. Who, who do you look up to? Who influenced you, like, commentating style-wise? Brian Moore. Arms Brian House. Moore. Peter Drury. MC Theme. MC Theme. <laughs> um, Good geezer, like Clive it. Tilsley. Big Clive. Man like Clive. Who else? Nice. Um, yeah, those, are, those are some of my favourites. But, it, cool. the, you know, that British thing, Maddie, is true. It's much more paused and it, it breathes and there's some silence. The, the South, for me, I love the Argentinian, Mexican, the, you know, there's some incredible South and Central American commentators who have, like, such an amazing lyrical capacity. <laughs> more so, like, like their MCs. Oh, they're just so lyrical and with their descriptions at pace. But then the passion is, is incredible. Mm. In Spain, it's like there's the volume of words, mm. but but I don't think there's the same like quality that in Spain, they hate silence. So it's got that intensity. You know, it's kind of like a machine gun. Words, mm. words, words, words the whole time. Never let it no, breathe. Let, but yeah. it doesn't it doesn't have the same nuance for me. And, you know, a lot of people here really like the the British style because it's you know it's, it's not as in your face yes. I, I, for, for me you know because i can't try and be something i'm not so i have that style you know that's got more pause and calm to it and or you want to give yourself space to then go up for the goals and stuff but yeah obviously when you see the great argentinian mexican mm. commentators it is incredible <laughs> i bet man and it's and it's good for the reruns as well yeah, when you no. when you watch the clips on YouTube because they can't usually yeah. for copyright they can't upload the British version yeah. or whatever so yeah. they always have like some Italian foreign whatever yeah. and Arabic as well there's an <laughs> Arabic know, yeah. they love it yeah. yeah and and that is passionate yo man that is passionate and the thing is I know in the Arab world like speaking to my cousins and stuff I haven't watched much of it but they they much prefer watch it in English because the commentators in in Arabic they they're more it seems like they're more about who's more passionate about it as opposed to just relaying information and what's going on. Do you know what I mean? And like, they just get sick of it. Yeah. Like they prefer the, the English one as well. Like you said, man. Have, have, have you met Messi? Yes. But you fucking have. I thought you were going to say no. <laughs> fucking hell, bro. That's sick. You met Totti, innit? Yeah. You had to sit down with Tots, bruv. Cup of tea, bruv, about yeah. Mick Totti. Yeah, Totti twice. my yard, twice. Yeah. Who's Cristiano. been the coolest footballer that you met? Like, who was just really cool, chill? Let Messi. Cristiano, was he cool? Was he a bit arrogant or what? He was pretty cool, actually. <laughs> he was both, if I'm honest. Like, he was pretty cool, but he, you know, he did... Um, use our camera monitor as a mirror you know, just to check himself and, <laughs> and then even make a little suggestion on perhaps you know reframing this and doing it different <laughs> this, is, this is my better side this yeah side. but he he was fine um who was the funniest football like like sense of humor wise uh, i tell you who the most special was okay uh, and anyone that met him will understand this he passed away not long ago and this is going to sound like hyperbole, right? This is going to sound like bollocks, but this is God's honest truth. Mm. I met Gianluca Vialli once. I wow. interviewed him at Wembley Stadium at quite a smart event. It, and he had this aura, Maddie, where when he walks in the room, you feel him. Like even if you mm. don't see him, you feel his presence. It's incredible. It was like this warmth, this positivity. And he, he, it sounds cliched. He lights up the room with his presence and his energy. Mm. He came in, was aware of him. He was like engaging, warm, sit down. And we're doing the interview and 
it shouldn't be rare, but it is rare. You know, I'm, I'm sitting there and ask, asking the questions and I'm like, he's looking me right in the eye. He's listening to every word I say. And he is, he, he's, he's answering the question. He's not answering what he thinks the question should be or yeah. what he thinks he should answer. He's answering the question. And I can't remember how long it was, you know, the, the interview, but once it was over, you know, it was such a buzz and, he, he carried that energy right up until until he left the room. You know, you could feel it. And as he left the room, you you felt like the loss because he had wow. this very special presence. And I've spoken to other people subsequently who sh- basically shared that feeling, that opinion. And mm. when he passed away, it was within the last couple of years, tragically young, the outpouring of um, tributes and appreciation for him as a person was incredible. But he he hands down was like, you know, beyond football and celebrity and achievements, like just as a human was just incredible. Wow. Yeah. He had like, he had an you air John about him. Vialli, man. Rest Yo, in peace. What a player. What was his, what was his highlight of yeah, his sure. career? Cause I know the name, but like, when did he play? Was it 90, like in the nineties? I think nineties, yes. nineties. He, oh, he yeah. came through, if I've got this right from oh, Sampdoria. Did you? Juventus. Did he carry, did, was he the one who carried the whole Italian team through the whole world? No, who was that one in 94? Was that him? Baggio. Baggio, that's who I'm thinking of is Baggio. Sorry, Baggio, yeah, yeah. yeah. Viali, Viali um, moved from Samp to Juve and then he, cut, he had this like thick curly hair and he shaved it all off and he played at Juventus with a completely bald head. He looked incredible and he won the Champions League with them off the top of my head 96 and that was a, that was a crowning moment for him winning that champions league yeah and if i'm yeah i'm, I'm trying to think he wouldn't have won any i don't think he who won any zidane international headbutt? who did zidane headbutt materazzi oh materazzi that was it yeah. sorry i'm getting my italian players mixed up man. Met, met him too oh is it damn did he have a concave chest <laughs> <laughs> that, well, that will, oh, you, a, phew, he's, 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 he's got aura favorites. He's yeah, got a serious imagine. aura, yeah. Zizou, yeah. He said, yeah. "Fuck you know." Yeah. Who who do you think? Yeah, who would you right. place the the goat, the greatest of all time? Messi. Messi. Messi for Messi. real. Yeah. More than Ronaldinho. Yeah. Yeah. More than yeah. Pele. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I mean, he is special. That's for yeah. sure. Everyone, it's true though. Everyone, you know, it depends on your era, doesn't it? Just I'm sure. been confirmed for mm. Arms House forevermore. Yeah. Messi is the best, the greatest of all, the GOAT. What makes it Messi better than Cristiano Ronaldo? No, we're we sticking to the first question you just asked. Didn't oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> no. I thought it was a follow on. I thought it was a follow on, but okay. But, but. Maddie, it's it's I think everyone you know everyone's got their favorites or their personal favorites and also it depends what era you're from I'm sure mm. people Yeah but from we're talking era. about the stats here you know about no, just the era, man it's all yeah. like, whoever yeah. you grew up watching Yeah who, who yeah people that w- grew up watching Pele will be like the, you know these guys are great but they're not Pele people that grew up watching Maradona will be like Messi's mm. brilliant but he's not Maradona and obviously the sport evolves humans get fitter mm. humans get quicker they get stronger mm. so we you know obviously if Messi was playing in the 1950s he'd walk it but mm. you can't compare different eras exactly. you just can't you just can't that's true you just can't exactly yo man exactly so right. listen uh, theme i'm gonna just try and share with you on whatsapp um a little lyric because obviously this is you know a graph and a and yeah. a hip-hop pod and you you know you're so kind to have me on Oh, that's and you, fucking amazing. What and, an amazing surprise. And you're here talking to me and asking me all these questions for, you know, but I, I thought maybe you guys could have a little listen to this. So I'm just sending it via WhatsApp. Yeah. I don't know if, I don't know if that's going to work or if we need yeah. to get it to, to Maddie. Who, who, who are you sending it to me? Yeah. All right. Got it here. I want to play. Okay. So yeah, so it's just it. a little lyric I, I wrote today. I have to thank Stevie Wonder for the music, but I have to, but yeah, it's just a lyric for you guys. Wait, theme. If you want to play it, play it into your should mic. I play it into the mic, or should I just send it to you? No, nah, because I, I won't. I mean, unless it's an MP3. If it's an MP3, send it. It's just like a recorded sound on, yeah. on WhatsApp. No, no, let's play it through the mic. It's better. And then you can forward oh, it. I'm just, to me. I'm just going to be holding it next to the mic. Oh, right, let's. This go. is the first time. Plan never heard this. Amazing. Do you want to set it up, or no? It's been set up. Yeah.
Can you hear it? I've known about Maddie from way back when. The boy <laughs> from Elon has a talent with his pen. With his uh, pen. Yeah, son. Talent with spray cans, talent with a microphone. <laughs> Philly D told me about him over some homegrown. <laughs> Philly D! Uh, yes. I asked Theme about Amber. He said, Rate it. <laughs> Salute. Rate it. Little did I know Andrew was infatuated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Many months later, they're still. Brothers having a blast. Oh, yeah. And now they run the very, 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 very best podcast. podcast. Woo! Arms house to your mum's house. <laughs> Arms house to your mum's house. Uh. Arms house to your mum's house. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> House to your house. Oh, house to your house. Yes. What a fucking rendition! <laughs> Dios mio, Amazon is free. We're in our feet, up in the place. Wow, man, that was incredible, man. Dude, that was just on the other second, just bosh. Jeez, Louise. Like that. We're going to have to change the theme tune now, man. That's the theme tune now, man. That's it. We're going to have to slip that in. Yo. Jeez. It's all yours. It's all yours. Man, that was incredible, man. <laughs> we should have got a live rendition, but I know with the mic, it's difficult to, yeah. Oh, I've got the guitar, but, you know, yeah. I'm happy to have a jam and you, you boys can spit. Yeah, oh man. Uh, no, I, I don't know if logistically that will work out right now, man. But Matt, okay, listen, guys, we've done 37 minutes. We've got 15 minutes from the other one. Um, we got some listener questions we could get into. Um, got graph critique. We got graph critique as well. So I reckon we should get into that right now. What do you think? Yeah. All right, cool. Sounds like a plan, Maddie. Let's hit the question. Oh, the question, tu vois, the question. Toi. Eh, oui. Eh, oui. All right, let's go. Yeah, what's up, boys? You good, yeah? Wait, it's good. Uh, it's good to. I mean, I got a question for you. If that's cool, yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah, like, what's the worst roommate you've ever had? Safe. Oh, there you go. Did you hear that? The worst what? Roommate. What's the worst oh, roommate yeah. you've ever had? I've got a oh, I've crazy a mad one. I don't know. Roommate, <laughs> Tim, can you think of one off the head now? Or I got one though. Fucking hell. Yeah, go on. Mate, when I was at uni, yeah, at Brighton University, I was sharing a house with two of my good friends who I grew up with. And then this one random guy, his name was Tom. Yeah, I won't say his second name. This guy, yeah, he was always... Like, he was a smart dude, and he came from a well-to-do family, yeah? But he just lived like a bum, yeah? And when I say like a bum, I'm talking he never cleaned, he never did nothing like that. And even that, ass, motherfucker. even that I can get around, yeah? But then, am, am I all right? Yeah, and then, and then he was a DJ as well. So he had loads of CDs, and he had his CDJs, and he had his speakers, yeah, in his room. And he would just blast, like, that tech drum and bass not even nice drum and bass just that evil wah, 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 all through the fucking night while he's doing pills yeah and i'm going in there i'm going bro it's three in the morning i beg you just use where's your this where's this this is in brighton when i was at brighton you i'm like uh, bro please. i'm like i love raven i love drum and bass you know what i mean I was, i'm not dissing the music but just use your headphones man he's like no nah, it's not the same through the headphones i gotta play it through the speakers and i'm like fuck sakes yeah but then what made it even worse yeah. One day he locked his keys in the apartment and none of us were home. And there happened to be scaffolding outside the, the building. So he climbed the scaffolding, got up to his window, smashed his window, and then came in. And this was during the winter. 
So then he couldn't stay in his room anymore because it was just super freezing cold. So he moved all his shit into the living room now, all his decks and his speakers and his fucking, you sleep in there and everything slept in there. And just now he took over the living room and it got to a point where we, we we had to sit him down like several times and go, you can't live like this. We're all paying equal rent here. You know what I mean? You can't just take out the living room. You know what I mean? And and the guy was just always spanging on pills. He always had a what, big- every day, All day, every day? Pretty much every oh, other day. Yeah, man. He was doing that. pills and just was a scatty dude, man, playing loud. It was just hell living with this fuck. And then- my mate who I was living with, his girlfriend used to come over all the time. And then one night he was so spanging and we were all in the living room chilling and he pronounced his love for my mate's girlfriend in front of everybody. Like he just, he must have been high and he just fucking did. And my mate now hates him. Some proper like, druggy party house. <laughs> yeah. Well, not Rank we house. The thing is we were Rank. He made it into that, which, which was like to our, you know, to our, you know, non-happiness or whatever the fucking word is, to our discontent. We didn't want a house. Our like dismay. That. Our dismay, exactly. And then he was so, like, he became schizo because he was doing so many drugs and he was getting paranoid. And then it got to a point where my best mate, whose girl he pronounced his love to, and him couldn't be in the same room together. So, like, you know what I mean? It was like he'd be in his bedroom and then he'd be in the living room or they'd... Yeah, to, like, it, was, it was hell living there. Oh, was, that's awkward. Awkward. Yeah. So they, that's one Literally. one story. I mean, I, 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 Mal, I just remembered Art McCulloch. Don't oh. say full names. Don't oh, say full him. names, please. But yeah, what a prick that he's a <laughs> one. A fucking rat face, scrawny, fucking crack smoking looking mother. It is this. Disgusting. Where was this? Where was this? That was in, bruv. That was in, yeah. Southfields, like near Wimbledon. Mm. And uh, I got the link because he was working with one of our dad's brethren's. Mm. And he was looking for a place to live. And that dad knew that I was looking for a place to live. And he hooked it up. Okay. And I just thought like he was gonna be like him, like this is one of the these geezers like he smoked smoked drawers all day, just chill out, da, da, da. you know, obviously got a good job, but mate, I should I was too young to think this geezer obviously doesn't have a good job. He's fucking fifty something. Oh right. But like old like looking dead. <laughs> yeah. How old were you? Man was like in his twenty, like young. Yeah. How old was I, Mouse? Twenties, mid twenties. Probably. I never met Art, but he's kind of mythical from hearing about you him through meet, theme. All that shit. You never no, I never him. met him, but I remember, I haven't thought of Art McCulloch in so long, but I remember you living with him. A couple of heads knew, like, knew him, uh, Maddie. Mm. So he knows who I'm talking about because yeah. it's just like that. So what did he do? What made him a bad roommate or housemate or whatever? <clears throat> Bruv, I'm living in this, this old man's house, yeah, where he thinks he runs the roost. And I'm in like my early twenties, going to like um, labouring jobs, mm. saving up to go to Corsica, not Corsica, Croatia. I drove there from fucking West London. I was saving up and living with this geezer, saving up and doing shit labouring jobs to go to go there. And he was a fucking cunt to me, yeah, mm. like a horrible cunt to me, yeah, yeah. to the point where that like, I couldn't do shit. If I used shit, he'd be like, why are you using it now? Really, really, like, all like proper, like just, you couldn't live. Do you know what I mean? And I was a youth as well. And I'd only lived with like a couple of mates beforehand. And I was like, right, what the fuck is this? And, if, and I just allowed it and just chilled in my room. Like obviously, and then started off all right with him, completely broke down. And I was just like chilling in my room. Mm -mm -mm. And then he come in, he said something to me one, one morning and he, and he said something bad. But I can't remember what it is. Because it's a long time ago, but he said something in, for me to go to work thinking, "No, that's it. But then that's it, bro. That's it." But it wasn't about money. It was about I can't remember. What it, he was would like, he, "Would he put like?" He used to think he was a little bit of like a scary bad man. Mm. Like he did used to do that, like to sort of tower over you a bit. And I remember thinking at the time, like, "Rush, should I just like <laughs> Spark push this guy geezer off?" I said, "What are you, what are you doing?" <laughs> do you know what I mean? And. Uh, <coughs> 
one day was it was it it obviously wasn't with you oh it was with jean jacques it was with it was jean jacques it was. and uh i said jean jacques i'm gonna move i got i'm gonna whilst this geese has gone to work here yeah? i took the day off work bailed him he came round. it was like it was in this nelson mandela estate no it was called andrew mandela or something like that it was called something no, Andrew Reese, Re- Andrew Reese estate. It was something like that. Something yeah. like that, man. I can't okay. remember what it was. Yeah. But it was shit. It was just a terrible. We lived on the f- 16th or 14th floor. Jeez. Mad view, like netting below us and shit on the outside of like a drop. You know what I mean? Yeah. We had to go upstairs, me and my brother in the lift, trying to rip out all this shit. I was banging the bird next door. One day, the bird next door. This is no word of a lie yet. I'm in bed and on my J's. I wasn't on my J's. He was probably there. I was in bed, just knocking at the door. And I'm like, well, who's knocking at the door? I go and open the door and it's her in a dressing gown. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, going, and, I, I'm, and I haven't caught on at all. I'm like, all right, what's up? You right? She's like, sorry, were you in bed? And I'm like, yeah. Like, what are you doing, you fucking idiot? Do you know what I mean? I was, I was in bed, getting all you just come around to my house and you have you lost your key? You know what I mean? She's like, oh, this isn't going very well. And I'm like, that's sweet. And she said, uh, maybe I'll maybe shut the door and I'll try it again. I'm like, what? Shut the door, yeah? And she just completely takes off her robe, knocks on the door, and over the door. She's like, hi. I'm from the door. <laughs> I knew she was from next door. I lived there for like fucking months. Da, da, da. I just wonder if I can come in. I was like, yeah, come in. I've come in. Yeah. What, butt naked? Completely naked. <laughs> All right, sweet. But my actual literal next door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this has gone from... You had from... to come out of my flat on the 14th floor and go like that. So this has gone from the nightmare housemate to no, the, she was, uh, the she best, best neighbour ever. Memory, bro. She <laughs> the... memory. Yeah, well, I did, but still... Her, man. That was fucking amazing, bro. <laughs> so did it balance out then? Your, your shitty housemate and then you had a beautiful nah. next door neighbour? The man got upstairs, get all the shit, done a couple of trips and got the, ho- the whole house of my shit gone. Yeah? Mm. Not paying him. Rare, rare, rare. If he wants to say shit, he can say shit. On the last trip, Big J is in the car, and I've gone on my J's. Mm. And uh, it's Big J who, we, who I drove to Croatia with. And we come down, coming down on my J's, uh, and at, I come out the house on the 40th floor, brother, it's like the movies, like when, the, when the thing came up, bing, someone came out, and I could hear them coming out. And I knew John Jack was staying in the car, so I'm like, oh, it blatantly could be him. Yeah? Do you know what I mean, or her. There was only like three or four people that lived on that floor. And for sure enough, they come in the house, yeah? and it's him. And he start chucking it straight away. Like, where, 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 where are you doing? He's obviously seen the car downstairs, all my shit in it and stuff like that, because he was just uh, parked like next to the door. We were trying to run in and out. Where, where. Yeah. You think you can go without paying me? There? And I just gripped him up, rough. Like, finally had it. It was in the doorway. They come in there. There's like a corridor here, corridor here. My bedroom's like the first room you see as you enter the door. He's come into me like that, gripped him up and dashed him onto oh, the God. onto the bed, which had like no duvet, no sheets, or anything. And went up to him and grabbed him like by the shoulders and the neck and just pinned him down and said, "That's fuck." I don't yeah, know what cold I stole, cold stone stunned him that was onto it. the bed. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I said, "I'm fucking. I'm, I should have done this fucking ages ago. I don't know. I didn't. You know what I mean?" And just yeah. hold up. Now I've been lucky, really. I can't think of any nightmare housemates. Mm. I had great housemates in Nottingham, great housemates first time in Barcelona. Amazing. Oh. I mean, the thing is, it's such a simple oh. concept, though. Like, when you're living with people, man, it's give and take, you know? Because we're going to be in each other's space every You want to talk again. about give and take, you need so, to get out of England. So you got to, Those people, some of these people you're mentioning, they gave a lot. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, when, once it gets unbalanced like that too much, and you don't communicate, and you don't, and you, you, you get to a point where you're just, you just like fucking just mulling over how much you hate this person you're living with. And then it just yeah. no, culminates no, no, no. to a big yeah. thing, like fucking slamming, body slamming him into the fucking yeah. bed before you go. Yeah. I want to talk about Barcelona and the days of Barcelona. I mean, we can do that instead. I want to talk about Esther and, and Esther and, and Kiko, no? Set it up properly. Come on, These set it up. These amazing people. What, what are they? Come on, hit it. They're, they're flatmates that brought him in one day said, yeah, man. Yeah. It turned out to be a wicked, wicked decision. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. This, this, you go this, visit your bridge and you're like, yo, well, these people are safe. Yo, like, what yeah. the fuck? He's like, yeah. 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 yeah, this is 
Maddie back in 05 when I went there. So I was 22 and oh. um, found a room in a flat with three flatmates, right? I wanted to live with local people because I wanted to learn the language. Mm-hmm. And two of and those... man learned it, by the way. Man learned it yeah. to a T. What? <laughs> and, two, and two of the... F- Two of the flatmates were local. They, it was a, a boy called Kiko and a girl called Esther. Absolute don. They're just yeah. I, I, I fell on my feet, Maddie, because they're just such, amo los dos. such good mm. people who I'm still in touch with. Yeah, amazing. And then, as I mentioned earlier, theme came out four times. You know, he he, he was coming to visit. He knew them really well. He managed just to stay. Man managed just to stay. Theme. Yeah. Remember when it was my birthday and Kiko and his friends gifted me a Catalonia. Oh! If you, you've blat- a stupid a question to ask if you've got that. You blatant. I've got it. I've what got is it. it? What is it? What? They gifted they gifted me the football shirt of Catalonia. Oh wow, okay. In a flat which was deeply rooted in yeah. Catalonia vibes. Like Catalonia, yes. Por favor. It felt very mm. special. It felt like, you know, being welcomed into the clan. Ah, it was an yeah. amazing moment. Yeah, it was it amazing. It was like that. Yeah. It was like the knights of the realm. Like, they're all tonk, all tonk and taller than yeah. us. Yeah. Loud, big Spanish lads getting lashed away, and they were like, Yeah, this is for me. I happen to witness that. Yeah. Wow. I Actually, that, that moment. that's interesting in Barcelona, the whole Catalonia thing. And I was there just after the riots happened and there was a cab. <laughs> <graffiti>. <laughs> it, it, it was great. What did we used to run it on the wall? <laughs> Can't remember. Espana <laughs> knows Catalonia, Catalonia knows Espana. But did I write in English? I think so. There was always always some always massive graph or there was a fresh, fresh white wall next to the Sagrada Familia. Mm. Uh, you know, it would say Catal- Catalonia is not Spain or something like that. Yeah, mm. like just in a f- and there was a lot of that written around, like a bit political graph. Like, yeah, oh, this was this was 2017. Yeah. Basically, there was a so. they wanted a referendum. Cat- Catalonia wanted a referendum to vote for their independence, and the referendum wasn't granted by Spain. That was it. Yes, and it, so it was rendered illegal. But yes. Catalonia went ahead and had the ballot boxes and had the votes, and people went and and there was there was violence. There was a clash between the voters and the Spanish police who'd come in to enforce that this uh, referendum wouldn't take place. It was illegal, yeah. So that was like in 2017 and 2018. This was hot, hot topic. Um, all of the swell of support for independence was growing and growing it felt as if it had gone above 50 percent um mm. and th- the ramifications of being felt today i mean in the most recent general election it was Puigdemont who whose party um pushed for that referendum and he then was in exile yeah he got fl- locked up almost or something yeah i remember well he, he fled to avoid fled. yeah he was in belgium for a number of years but he's back now and 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 although it was a minority that his party won it was a key minority because it was a hung parliament so it rattles on but i but wow. it's not quite as prevalent it's not quite the, the the swell of support for it's not quite as large as it was in 2017 2018 but maddie like you said you know there it was it was a massive deal then Oh, mate, because I remember in 2017, I can't, I literally turned up to Barcelona for work. I was working at Karl Lagerfeld, you know, that uh, designer brand. So it was on the high street, you know, the really plush one with the Gaudi build, not the big, uh, big Gaudi, the other one, the one with the garden on top. That area, so really rich area, but everything was battered with graph, a yeah. cab, a cab, all cops are bastards, like sprayed every on the street, on the pavement, yeah. and they were scrubbing it off when I was there. And I was like, damn, man, it kicked off, bro. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. And, and even a year later, you know, huge, mm. well, demonstrations, just massive demonstrations. And, yeah. and you know, when you got so many people, obviously there was some wreckage and some violence, but it was... Yeah, it was massive. It was massive. What do you time. think? Do you think it should separate or it should stay together? I mean, well, or my, you don't have a. I I felt that they should have been permitted the referendum. Mm. Um, yeah, for so democratic yeah, reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Um, straight up. Yeah, but I'm assuming your housemates Kiko and Nemlot they wanted it separate. But it's a very divisive topic within Catalonia. Uh, but it's been a long time. Very, it's been a long, yeah. long time. Yeah. It's not like a Brexit thing where there's a vote to leave something. These people yeah. are like, yeah. that's where they're from. Yeah. yeah. This is Catalonia. Yeah. yeah. And it's not the only region of Spain uh, with its own language, yeah. its own flag. Like the its Basque own country. Mm. Yeah. Um, there's, you know, the autonomous regions of Spain, but they have differing levels of um, economic independence. Uh, 
and and Catalonia, many people feel that the you know the deal they have with the central Spanish government isn't a fair one. Yes, in, in essence, but it's it's hugely divisive. You know, people like as it happens, my flatmate Kiko, yes, he's pro independence. Mm. All right. Okay. Listen, Pi people, we've done an hour now, man. So yeah. we've gone above and beyond. But uh, oh, I want to, yeah. I want to sneak. Do you have in. to go to. No, no, it's all good. No, but I have to get this edited yeah, by midnight tonight. You know what I mean? So you know what I mean. We can't go on for too much longer. But I'd love to get a graph critique in there. I know Tim. I don't know what, what's your history. Man, with- used to battle London, bro. <laughs> yeah, Tim. What was your history with with graph? With Sorry. Graph. I, 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, Tim, what, Tim, what was your introduction and, his, and history of graph? Maddie, I was like a voyeuristic graph aficionado. I, I, I used to travel on the tube, on the train, on the bus, and I used to just look at everything. I was obsessed with it. I'd speak to theme about it, and, and I would know when every tag or double piece popped up because I was always watching, but it was always kind of from the outside. Like I never did it. I'd, I'd sketch and stuff on paper, but I never, I never did it. You know, I, just, I never uh-huh. really did it. So I used to, you know, see um, ZDF crew and DDS crew and see all their graph and admire it and know the the right know the the art, but not the, it's the F crew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, not ZDF. Incredible. SDF. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so, well, and it's kind of like, well, I was thinking about this pod with the graph and the hip hop and the, well, we're going to play a tune later if we've got time, haven't we? Yeah, we will, I'll come yeah. back we'll to it later. Go out to it. Yeah. Wicked. But, and the reason I chose the track is because it's like, I heard someone say kind of recently, oh, I don't like hip hop. I don't like hip hop. Like I'm not a hip hop nut. I'm not a graph nut, but I like music and I like art. Yeah. And I used to, you know, in, in, in London, I used to just love looking at the graph. Love, love, love looking at the graph. And the same same with hip hop. Like there's some hip hop I love. There's some hip hop I don't like. The track we'll mm-hmm. listen to later for me is like, how can you, know, you know, it's just great music. Beyond being hip hop is just great music. Yes. Yeah, I like that. Incredible, incredible. Yeah, man. Okay, so cool. So you have an interest. You know, you know some of the the term terminology in graffiti. Then you know what a toy is. You know what a king is. You so know, you used to do bear sketches. I've seen bear uh, psi sketches. S i g h. Yeah. Was was a, was the was a psi dub never done? Never. 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 The dog shit park. Nothing. Never. Never. Oh, Never. Man. It was all very... reaches. You caught some reaches. A few reaches. A few. I used to but put you minimal. up quite a few times. Oh, Iggy, I was always asking you to. You barely ever did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was too busy putting himself up, man. All right. Has everyone got the photo? Not yet. Hold on. Have you sent? No, 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 no. Okay. Has theme not sent it over now? I just got it. Sorry. All good. Let me let me set it up then, man. Last week. We got sent in a thing. We were we were we had a wicked chat with uh, Steve's, and uh, yep. we did a bit of graph critique uh, on a chap who wrote. Oh, Curb. big up Steve's, man! That was wicked. So last week this got sent in Curb, and it was really toy, and we were talking about tadpoles and catching jokes off him. Then he messaged me and said it wasn't him who sent it in; it was his mate sending it in, uh, knowing it was really toy and knowing we were going to take the piss. So I want I don't want to. Oh, it really? Yeah, but it was it was still Curb or no? It was Curb's piece, but he said I was drunk and he, you know, the same excuses. He said, "Oh, it was a toy thing and blah blah blah." I did it ages ago. So I said to him, "All right, sorry about that, but send yeah. me <laughs> send me a newer one and we'll chat about that as a, like a redemption." <laughs> so he sent me this one. Yeah. <laughs> no way. Yeah. It's no much, way. It's much better. Than you the, the same one. thing with the fucking art. <laughs> what the fuck is? Yeah, the R still has the thing on it, though. It's much better than it was, though. It's much better than the last one. Um, oh, it's so bad to laugh. But, bruv. So it's another Curb, K-E-R-B, black fill, white stars, white outline, black oh. one time, blue, uh, like cloud around the outside, little bits of green in there and gray with a shadow to the left or a 3D to the left. What's your first thoughts, Tim? Just looking at that, I mean. Like it. I like yeah. it, Maddie. I like it. I like that. I'm not mad on the fill, but I like, apart from the, the R, which I think you guys recognize as a bit gammy on the leg of the R, but That's apart it. from that, <laughs> A-E-B, I like yeah. it. I like it. The, the blues, 
not polished, is it? The, the bl- no, the blue, the yeah, it's a but, bit. But overall, personally, I quite like the um, the lettering. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah, it's relatively you know simple, straightforward, which is a good thing, I think. Uh, it's got a little bit of flair to it. Oh yeah, it's got the red highlights as well, and little like kind of uh, highlighty bits in the red. I think the schemes are evenly, you know, distributed. Like there's no bits where it's clumping up too much here and there. Very nicely balanced. Yeah, just that the leg of the R, but the, on this one, rather than the leg being too thin, it's got that little kind of weird bit coming out of the bottom of the left leg of the R, and it's going on top of the, like a little penis on top of the right bit of the R. Why well, does it, yeah, no, it actually looks like a fucking cock of yeah. a cock and ball set. It does, it's got a little head on it and well, everything. That's the left bit at the bottom of the bit of the R going over, over coming the up top. and across. And that's the bit. And then a the helmet bit on it. It doesn't happen anywhere else on the on the piece. I don't know why he decided to do that. Maybe he thought the negative space. Why there doesn't was too he wide. just bring the second, the bottom right bit of the R? Yeah, and bring it in. Yeah, or something. Yeah, exactly. Something else, man. Um, or just like basically, just bring it down. Yeah. Why is there always something going on there? Exactly. I mean, I think it's because the K. Look at the bottom of the K. Just keep it like that with the R. That's what I'm saying. You match the K with the R. Boom. Why do you have to do something different there? You know. Bottom what I mean? of the B with the border going around like that. Off the piece and the dot dot it reminds me of a blink piece, blink dub. <laughs> a little bit of blink, yeah, <clears throat> I agree. But but to be honest, it's it's much more competent than the last one. Um, yeah, yeah, it's much better than the last one. You don't yeah. have to do that shit with the R. Why don't you just get the fucking R and do it normally like you've done all the other letters? Why does it always have like some fucking wrinkly earthworm gym knob hanging out? <laughs> exactly, man. Jeez Louise. Um, <clears throat> There's some great graph in Barcelona, man. Just walking around that city, there's so many cool, weird things. Because also the Spanish, that southern part of Europe there, is like kind of weird styles you get. But you get like an amalgamation, some traditional style graffiti, oh. some weird, crazy Euro styles, and then like mad, like symbolic, weird kind of I've stuff. I've got to go to, I've got to go, I'm just going to go and pick something up over there. All right, cool. Go for it. But it must be beautiful walking around that city, Tim, and just seeing the street art and the, and the, yeah. the graph. And yeah, yeah, there's there's a couple of massive legal walls near where I live, like one block oh, this cool. way, and then and then there's a skate park with massive walls that you know all get painted. And a few mo- a couple yeah. of months back, we saw that the council had paid to have the whole skate park buffed, oh, or, you know, painted in in painted over in brown, just the whole thing. Mm. We were, I remember you sent me a photo, um, no? Yeah. And we were just watching them do it and just thinking, this is the biggest Why? waste of money. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's going to be regraphed in, in days. I don't understand why you would do it. And they, they and it was a massive operation. I had about eight staff, you know, re, repainting. All these and it was what, a skate park? Yeah. What's so, the point of doing it there? Anyway? Just, Fuck it I mean, We've kind of spoken about this a couple of times on the pod. Like a lot of it is symbolically done by governments that go, we're in charge. We're in control of the situation yeah, just to, to kind show of show. Them. Yeah. That's why they do things like that. And, and then they just get graphed the next day. And then after a couple of weeks, it's back to how it was. I mean, yeah. it's just, it's just, they do it just to kind of tick off a box and say, we tried yeah. or we did it. You know, it's just it made no sense. It made no sense. And you, are you happy to have left Londres? <laughs> Yeah, that we we came for a year. To go and live in Barcelona. We came for a year and we're still here. We love it. Fucking wow. loving that decision, yeah. bruv. We love yeah, it. Man. Ten out of ten lifehood lifestyle decision, bruv. Incredible sensation. Big decision to make. Same fucking sensation. Theme. We got to go to do a trip to Barcelona and we'll do an episode in Barcelona. Yes, with and Tim. paint one of these walls near me. Sensation. Yeah. Sensation. All right, look, my internet is playing up. We've got to wrap this up. Party yeah, but people. make sure you invite Messi and Ronaldinho, yeah? Because, like, yeah, best mates. Yeah. Go. But do you want to set up this song? You you, uh, uh, you wanted to set up this song, and we'll go out on the song. Wicked. Theme said choose a song. I could, I mean, there's so many I could have picked, but this I didn't want to overthink it, and this one came to mind. And um, hmm. it's a hip-hop track, but it's just a track it's just a great yes. tune it, I, yeah, a whatever musical, it's just a yeah. musical track that i hadn't heard in years and i mm. heard it not, not that long ago and when i reheard it having not heard it in a while it just hit me straight in the heart and i just 
I love as well, Maddie. One of the things I love across all, genre, all genres is, is is love songs. I love it when people write from yes. the heart, and I feel like this track has it. And and it's I love wow. the London and sound most, to most, it. Your 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 track, the track you wrote and played earlier today in this episode, yeah. certainly <laughs> came from the heart. Very thoughtful, sensational. It was an incredible theme. You have to send that to me now, please. Don't Beautiful forget. Track. I need yeah. it for the edit. I'm it's gonna. Good. I was hoping to find like a an actual Barcelona album, uh huh, old school photo album. Uh-huh. And I, was, I have it because that might be where well, the dig uh, it out. Yeah, dig it out. I don't know Spain. Afterwards, theme. Dig it out. Yeah, send yeah, me yeah. any photos you want to include because I'm editing this tonight. So you got you got literally vale, vale, only a vale, minute vale, to do vale, it. Vale. So the song Tim was talking about is <laughs> "Dreamy Days" by Roots Maneuver. For me, this song. It, it's definitely more of his commercial stuff. Even though Roots Maneuver, he's such a legend. Like he, you can tell he doesn't make stuff to be commercial. No, he's he a just, musician. He just yeah. makes beautiful music, and and then and he just crossed over. You know what I mean? Because uh, it's incredible. He's such an incredible dude, and it's a shame. I think he has health issues at the moment or whatnot. I think that's why he's not releasing so much. Don't quote me on that. I don't know. But this song in particular, for me. <clears throat> there's certain songs that can take you back to the time when you heard it back then. I think this came out in the early 2000s, maybe 2001, two. I'm not sure, but it just takes me back to, yeah, them days, man. And it's got that nostalgic feel good factor to it. What's so, it called? Dreamy Days? Dreamy Days from, Dreamy from, days. Run Come, da, 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 da. from the Run Come oh, Save Me album, Roots Maneuver album, which is, I think, its oh, second no album way. with Witness. It's going to be fun and lots of love. That's All right, party people, that's been episode 85 of Arms House to your International Bad Man inside the house! Tim Lee, thank you very much for joining us. Of course, hopefully we can get you back in the future, all right? Cheers, Maddie. Cheers, team. Thanks for having me on. And thank you. Hablamos, pick up, hablamos oh, más tarde. Seguro que sí. <laughs> yes, and thank you for your, you know, football uh, critique and 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 uh, you know, uh, uh, sensational and, knowledge <laughs> and all of that. all things pulled out of the hat immediately yes. on the plate. You want the answer to that? There you go. You fucking boom. Dude. Dreamy day. Oh. Roots maneuver. Professional. Timely yeah. forever. Yeah. This is nice. Just a long foot bandito I might take off my shoes Won't take off my socks tonight Take a little peep under that crop tonight But there'll be nobody pop, pop tonight You know my style I keep it on a holy out of body mind blown We in some zone So how deep can we sow those seeds And proceed to buck the limit Spinning in the whirlpool of sensual peak Messing around with all these chemical rushes When natural highs come a whole lot cheaper Sweet to get, I got me singing. Baby, 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 baby. I got this sudden urge to misbehave. Yeah. I want to take you away from all the stresses. Buy you nice flowers and expensive dresses. You don't believe me. You think I'm cheesy? Give me days. Come what may. Reveal no way. There's gonna be fun and lots of love. Do you think I need to go and paint that yellow BR, bruv?